UNL Extension's Nebraska On-Farm Research presents Designing Your Experiment Using a Paired Comparison Layout, the third of four videos in this series. In the last video, we learned about the importance of randomization and replication in designing the experiment. To compare two treatments, such as an untreated area and a fungicide treatment at V5 corn, you can use the paired comparison design. This is a randomized complete block layout with just two treatments. The paired comparison requires a minimum of five replications and six to seven are recommended to assure representative results. Sometimes a comparison field strip may be lost due to weather, pests, or human error in data collection. To make this work, an extra pass or round, depending on equipment size, is made so treatments can be compared in a different order across the field. For instance, in Rep 1, we compare the fungicide to the check. In Rep 2, we compare the check to the fungicide treatment. This pattern continues for as many reps as you have in the field. When testing treatments, such as nutrient and pesticide applications, buffer rows are needed to ensure that the check treatment is not affected by any product drift from the treated rows. Depending on the size of your equipment, you may need to plant extra rows for each comparison strip. For example, with a 90-foot sprayer, you would treat 90 feet or 36 rows in the center of the plot and leave untreated buffer rows on either side of the fungicide-treated strips. You would harvest these center rows separately, collecting data from them for your records. The buffer rows would be harvested separately outside this research project. In our example, we are spraying a fungicide. We'll need buffer rows to ensure that any fungicide drift occurs primarily on the buffer rows and not in the check strips. With paired comparison designs, it's important to plan for the size of your equipment and ensure that each treatment comparison strip is harvested. For instance, if each of your treatments were six rows wide and you have a 12-row combine, it's important that you do not harvest two treatment strips in the same pass. This would disregard the randomization that you introduced in your block designs. For example, you would no longer be able to compare the fungicide versus the check treatment for Rep 1 and the check versus the fungicide treatment for Rep 2. Correctly harvesting your plots can help ensure the reliability of your results. When harvesting a treatment without a buffer, you would compare the harvest weights from the first treatment with the first strip of the untreated check for your first replication. You would then compare the second check strip against the treatment strip for the second rep, and so on. When harvesting a field with buffer strips, such as used in our fungicide study, correct harvesting is important. You don't want to lose any yield data after all the work you've put in. You'll harvest the same rows that you sprayed, leaving the buffer strips in the field. Yield from the first fungicide treatment is compared against yield from the first check strip to make Rep 1. The second check strip is then compared against the next fungicide treatment strip to make Rep 2. This pattern continues across the field until all the check and fungicide treatments are harvested within each rep. Once all the fungicide and check strips are harvested, the buffer rows can then be harvested. Once you have your data collected, it's important to know what difference the treatment truly made in comparison to the untreated check. Use statistical analysis for this. For more information about conducting on-farm research, see Using On-Farm Research to Meet Your Information Needs on the UNL Extension Publications website at www.extension.unl.edu slash publications. To learn more about how you can work with UNL Extension educators and specialists to conduct on-farm research, go to cropwatch.unl.edu slash web slash farm research.